In this module, we are going to study the general morphology of bacteria, size and shapes and the generalized diagram of a typical bacterial cell. All living things are made of cells and cells are the smallest units that can be alive. The living things have been broadly classified into two categories, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells have many similarities. They both have DNA as the genetic material. They both are bounded by a cell membrane. But they also have some very prominent differences. The most important being that the prokaryotic DNA is not bounded by a nuclear membrane whereas the eukaryotes have a well-defined nucleus which is membrane bound. Also, the eukaryotic cells have a number of membrane bound organelles like mitochondrion, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi bodies and lysosomes but prokaryotes lack them. Further, the prokaryotes have 70S ribosomes whereas the eukaryotes have 80S ribosomes. The other differences include the size. The prokaryotes are very small whereas eukaryotic cell is quite large. The prokaryotes are unicellular while the eukaryotes generally speaking are multicellular. Moreover, prokaryotic cell divides by binary fission whereas eukaryotic cell follows a cell cycle which is strictly regulated. Furthermore, you can see that the prokaryotic cell has a cell wall which is absent in eukaryotes. Prokaryotic cell has extracellular appendages like flagella, pili or fimbri whereas eukaryotes generally do not. Prokaryotes are among the smallest of living organisms. Depending upon the differences in the cell wall and cell membrane structure, prokaryotes are further divided into two important domains, eubacteria and archaea. In this module, we would first study the size, shape and arrangement of bacteria which together constitute the morphology of bacteria. Just like in animals, where size ranges from a tiny gnat to the giant blue whale, bacteria vary from 20 nanometer to 1 millimeter in diameter at the largest. An individual bacterium is very, very small and cannot be seen by the naked eye. They are usually just 1 to 2 micrometer in diameter. If we consider the diameter of a pinhead to be 2 mm, then a pinhead can accommodate more than millions of bacteria as you can see. Bacteria do vary in their size. Some are as small as the largest viruses. The smallest, for example, some members of the genus Mycoplasma are about 300 nanometer, that is, 0.3 micrometer in diameter, approximately the size of the largest viruses, pox viruses. Ischerichia coli is a short rod of about an average size, that is 1.1 to 1.5 micrometer wide and 2 to 6 micrometer long. A few bacteria are fairly large. Some spirochetes occasionally reach 500 micrometer in length and the cyanobacterium oscillatoria is about 8 micrometer in diameter, the same diameter as a red blood cell. Recently, a huge big bacterium 
has been discovered in the intestine of the brown surgeon fish Acantherus nigrofuscus. This bacterium, Epulopisium fischelsoni, grows as large as 600 micrometer by 80 micrometer, a little smaller than a printed hyphen. Yet another big bacterium is Thiomargarita namibiensis, which is 150 micrometer in diameter and appear as a string of pearls. Thus, there are a few bacteria that can actually be seen without the use of a microscope and are much larger than the average eukaryotic cell. Because of their small size, bacteria have a large surface to volume ratio. For example, let us consider a spherical bacterium with the radius of 1 micrometer. The surface area would be about 12 micrometer square and a volume of about 4 micrometer cubed. The surface to volume ratio would be 12 is to 4 or 3. Now consider a larger eukaryotic cell with a radius of 10 micrometer. It would have a surface area of about 1200 micrometer square and a volume of about 4000 micrometer cubed. The surface to volume ratio in this case would be 1200 is to 4000 or 0 0.3. As a result of the large surface area as compared to volume in the case of the bacterial cell, nutrients can enter the cell at a faster rate. At the same time, the volume to be nourished is very small. This accounts for the increased rate of growth and metabolism in bacteria. Also, the large surface to volume ratio of bacteria means that all the internal parts of the cell are very near from the surface and that nutrients can easily and quickly reach all parts of the cell. It is because of this large surface to volume ratio seen in bacteria that they are so successful despite their relatively small size and simple morphology. Moreover, the small size may be a protective mechanism from predation from higher organisms. For their small size, bacteria exhibit several different shapes. Let us first consider the common shapes of bacteria. The spherical round shaped bacterium is called a coccus. Plural for it is cocci. An example is Staphylococcus aureus. The rod shaped bacterium is called a bacillus. Plural bacilli. Example is Bacillus thetanus. Some bacteria are very short rods which are intermediate in size between rods and cocci. They are more or less oval and are termed coccobacilli. An example is a very common bacterium Escherichia coli. The spiral bacteria show three different variations. They are vibrio which are comma shaped. Example, Vibrio cholerae. These are actually rods which are curved at the ends. If the spiral bacterium is thick and rigid, it is called spirillum. Plural, spirilla. Example, spirillum volutens. And if the spiral is thin, flexible spiral, then it is called Spirochet, example Tryponema palladium that causes syphilis. Let us quickly revise the common shapes of bacteria once again. The spherical bacteria are called cocci, the rod shaped bacteria are called bacilli, and oval shaped bacteria are called cocobacilli. Further, 
comma shaped bacteria are called vibrios rigid spirals are known as spirilla and flexible spirals are called spirochetes apart from the common shapes that we saw in the last slide bacteria show a variety of other shapes which are not very common some bacteria are filamentous as exhibited by actinobacteria example streptomyces griseus some are lobed an example of which is sulfolobus sulfatatricus further bacteria can be square shaped club shaped star shaped as can be seen here the examples of these forms are halo quadratum valsby corini bacterium diphtheri and stella baculata some bacteria have a stalk for attachment to substratum the example of which is colobacter crescentus bacteria can also be triangular and y shaped the examples of which is hello arcula japonica and pyrodictium abyssi further bacteria can be pleomorphic which means that they show variable shapes and sizes in a response to changing environmental conditions they can be rod shaped in a particular environment and in the next moment they can turn to a cocci thus examples of pleomorphic bacteria are mycoplasma pneumoni and rickettsia provaseki bacteria show a wide variety of arrangement of cells and this is a very important characteristic for identification of an unknown bacterium we will discuss about the different arrangements of spherical bacteria the coccus if they appear in pairs then they are called diplococci neisseria gonorrhoeae is a common example if the cocci are in groups of 4 they are called tetrads and an example is micrococcus luteus cocci can also be arranged in chains and in this case they are called streptococci of which streptococcus mutans the oral bacterium is an example if the cocci are arranged in packets of 8 then they are called sarsina exemplified by sarsina ventriculi sometimes the cocci are arranged in clusters like a bunch of grapes such an arrangement is called staphylococci an example of which is staphylococcus aureus let us take a quick quiz to just find out if you have understood this topic so what arrangement of cocci would you call this as well it is staphylococci be ready for the next one this is you guessed it right it is streptococci how about this they are cocci arranged in packets of 8 sarsine what would you call these they are diplococci and finally these it is the tetrad arrangement of cocci i am sure you got them all correct so let's move on now to the next topic did you wonder and think and ask yourself why and how do cocci show these different arrangements agree that the arrangement is a characteristic feature of the genus well these arrangements are because of the plane of cell division some bacteria can divide in a plane every 12 to 20 minutes often they hang on to each other by the outer membranes 
for a while. Suppose that the bacteria in a culture are dividing every 20 minutes on average and then they hang together for 10 minutes before becoming separated. About half the cells will be singles and half in pairs. This is how diplococci originates. Now, each of the daughter cell divides in the same plane. You now have a short chain of four cells. Some daughter cells hang together for a long time and form long flexible chains. In fact, some genera of bacteria are notable for forming long chains which do not break apart until the culture runs out of food and is dying. This is how streptococci originate and yes, there is only one plane of division. Now imagine a single round bacterium which divides and the two cells hang together. Suppose the second set of cell division occur at right angle to the first. You would now have four cells in a square packet. This is how tetrads are formed. Now consider that each cell then divides in the third plane you now have a cube shaped packet of 8 cells. These are called sarsina. Suppose that the cells do not separate at all and divide randomly in different planes. They form a cluster of, or group of cells of irregular arrangement. This is called staphylococci. These cells resemble a bunch of grapes. Do the rod-shaped bacteria, that is bacillus, also exhibit these arrangements that we just saw for cocci? Yes, they do. Some bacilli do exist singly as in the case of bacillus cereus and appear as random arrangement. However, some bacilli appear in pairs after division. Such bacilli are called Diplobacilli. Example is Coxiella burnetti. If the cells stick to each other after subsequent divisions in the same plane, they are called streptobacilli. Example is Streptobacillus monoliformis. Sometimes the rod shaped bacteria divide longitudinally and remain attached to each other. This arrangement is exhibited by Corinibacterium diphtheri and is called palisade arrangement and resembles a pack of matchsticks kept together or a fence around your home. Let us now discuss the structure of a typical bacterial cell. Initially, it was thought that bacteria have no inherent cellular architecture. However, the discovery of electron microscope in the 1930s revealed the ultrastructure of these tiny little organisms. Structurally, there are three architectural regions. Appendages, which are attachments to the cell surface. These include flagella, which are necessary for bacterial movement and pili, which are also called fimbri. The second region is cell envelope, which consists of a capsule, cell wall and cell membrane. The third region is the cytoplasmic region that contains the DNA, both genomic and plasmid and ribosomes which are the sites of protein synthesis and various cell inclusions. We shall look at each of these structures one by one in the coming lectures.